Hi, Mary. Hi, Christian. Uh, what is it about today? We are going to talk about woman stuff. Woman stuff for me, a man. Right. The human papilloma virus infection, HPV. How is it decoded in biodecoding? First, we decode the organ. So most of the time, it's located on the cervix. So in right-handed women, we usually associate the cervix with a sexual and love frustration. For example, a woman learns that her husband cheated on her. She can feel frustrated because she's not the chosen one. She does not feel loved, or at least not the way she wants, in an unsatisfying way. So she may feel neglected. So the HPV will get in this area in a chronic condition. So when a woman feels that way, in therapy we would need to find the exact moment she felt that way. Now, what about the link made between HPV and cervical cancer? How would you approach this? I would approach it after the physician would have put a diagnosis, prescribed a treatment that the patient would follow. After that, and only if the patient wants it, I would be at his disposal. I repeat, I'm not a doctor, a cancer specialist, a pharmacist, or a psychologist. So once the medical people have done their job, if the patient wants to meet himself through the biological standpoint of biodecoding, then we make hypotheses. Statistically, we observe that in certain amount of cases, some women who had HPV before would have cervical cancer afterwards. Other women would have HPV but would never develop cancer afterwards. Some other women would have cervical cancer even though they never had HPV before. So here we are in statistics, in percentages. But a woman who has had those two diseases, she is in her percentage. And in her percentage, in her own experience, she is in 100%. It only concerns her. And when we are sick, we don't really care about others. We want to move forward, to understand, to feel better, to give ourselves the best chance to move towards well-being and good health. What I can propose as an opinion, a woman who develops this pathology on the cervix, in the uterus, She's affected by this love frustration, this bad dependency to a man. She can experience it once, twice, or even more. In that case, it can be her structure, her sensitivity, her Achilles heel, her weakness. That's how we explain relapses. We would experience this emotional shock several times in our life. For example, a woman, as a teenager, has a boyfriend who cheated on her and then she feels bad and upset. Later on, she has another boyfriend, and she realizes that it's the same. So the story repeats itself. We often observe that in psychotherapy, that the person has a psychological, biological, and emotional program that makes her experience the same situations over and over. For this woman, it will be on the cervix. For another person, it may be paralysis. For someone else, it may be asthma. For an asthmatic person, space, freedom, and relationship will be important. For someone with multiple sclerosis or paralysis, what's important is the movement, the freedom to move. It gives us a way of being into the world which can be respiratory, motor, gynecologic, which makes us repeat things. Let me give you another example. Some people have repeated headaches, and some others never have headaches. So some people have had headaches every week or every month for years. Those people are structured on control, on finding solutions, on dissociation, distance, on frustration. They have a problem at work, they must find a solution. In family, they must find a solution, they must control. 
If there is a problem with an inheritance, they must control the situation. So each time he will overheat his brain and therefore trigger a headache that we often call migraines. So we can suppose that some women are emotionally fragile in their relationship with a man. They need to be loved, to be chosen, to be pampered, to be exclusive. So some will be so sensitive to that that if their man just looks at another woman, they get very upset. She also may watch romantic movies that will maintain her in this mood, in this stress, in this reality of impossible or difficult relationship, which can at some point make a pathology evolve or intensify and transform into cancer, a tumor or any other symptom specific to this organ. It's an accumulation of the conflict, of the stress, and in the case of cancer, an identification to the woman in the couple that will make her at some point develop cervical cancer. So in conclusion, it's not only necessarily the virus the cause of cervical cancer. HPV and cervical cancer are two pathologies that you would approach differently or maybe separately. I can't confirm that it's the virus that creates cancer because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a biologist, I don't have a medical center for biological tests. I'm a researcher, but there are also other researchers with laboratories who have arguments and they created a link between the virus and the cancer. So I respect my peers and I'm happy that there are a lot of researchers that can offer practical solutions to sick people. So I can't assert this statement. I don't hold the truth either. So when a woman comes, I listen to her, where she has not been listened to by other people. I don't sell any truth. I don't fight for or against anything. That's why I can't assert the statement that there is a link between those two. Actually, I forbid myself to say that or think that. So we get back to the basics, which is to listen to the patient, see what emerges from this according to her symptoms, which are specific to her. Yes, which for this patient will make sense, but not for another patient. It will bring him comfort and relief. Thank you, Christian.